Afternoon, it's nearly three. How are we all? Nearly three o'clock, tier three. Ready, tea, kettle's boiled. Well, we're all good. Thursday, bank holiday tomorrow, VE day. Worth a celebration, I think. Just get my tea made. Just got normal, Thai food. Feel like I'm getting into a routine with my tea. Um, got my little mug today, new mug. Well, not brand new, but a new mug. I want to lose weight lying on the sofa eating biscuits. I, I kind of think it suits me. Really. Got to get my milk. Won't be a minute. Milk's out. Today we're going to talk about connecting with customers. So that's good. Um, There's kind of different worlds. Quite hard to stay in contact, really. Think about all the things that people need, uh, different things they need. So uh, just give me a little tea bag. I've got, I've got a question for you. I've got a tea-related question for you, obviously. Tea-related question. So my question today, is, it's kind of two parts, so you're going to have to put which bit you're going for in, in the answer box. Um, so the first thing is, um, how much is the most expensive tea bag? How much is the most expensive tea bag? I'm looking for the answers in pounds. Pounds. Um, the most expensive tea bag. So how much do you think the most expensive tea bag costs? And then the second bit is how much is the most expensive tea per kilogram? So most expensive tea bag individually and the most expensive tea per kilogram. So see what you can um, So just type them in the chat. Um, and we'll revisit those. I've got some Jeff cakes as well. I'm still going through the Jeff cakes. Can't do loads of different biscuits. Love a Jeff cake. So like I said, Tuesday. Two packs, two packs of pounds. Good, good work, Jeff Eggs. I'm happy with that. Um, and I'm still going on them. So nice cup of tea. No answers yet. Come on, guys. Give me some answers. Most expensive tea bag. Is that the tea bag, Crofty? 100 pounds. Oh, man. 100, 200 grand for the tea bag. <laughs> this is tremendous. Matt, 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 Matt never lets me down with a ridiculous comment. So uh, good work. Uh, just to let everybody know, it's under two hundred thousand pounds for a tea bag, and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it definitely is. I've done more research, Matt. Um, we've had to do some work, uh, so thanks, Matt, for coming in. It's always a quiet time when you're not there. Um, right, good. So, what we're going to talk about? Let's talk about some things uh, that's important. If people are still joining, most expensive tea bag, most expensive tea per kilo. Just type them in there. Um, lovely, there's some answers coming in. We'll review it in a bit. But what are we going to do? What are we going to do for our clients in these weird times? Right, so I've got a few I've got a few things I found out about. They're kind of quite interesting. Um, well, it's Sam Hendy just copying people's answers. That's really interesting. But right, firstly, uh, nice and simple, but we, we kind of communicate and try and make it a nice positive experience for people. Um, you know, just, just, to, just to communicate, keep spirits high, and I'll talk about that as we go. First thing I'd recommend is, is share a bit of strategy. Share your business strategy. That's that's not that's not deep deep diving into the strategy, but is strategy shifting? How my business is reacting is quite an important one. The the second one, um, Carly Cole, you're you're pretty close in one of your answers, as it happens. Um, the second thing is be be honest, be honest to the clients about what's happening, about delays, about choices, perhaps about compressed products that you're now offering. Um, but, but don't think that don't people don't expect everything to be normal. So don't just say, oh, it's, it's just the same, really. It, it's just kind of the same. So that, that's kind of quite key. I've got some notes up here. I've got, um, got to make sure I get um, get all the all the things done. I've, I've got something that's that's really quite useful as well. Be, be a caring business. So if I've got some people who are, are kind of quite involved in the business, care in the community, kind of what you do outside. We've all seen loads of things online, social media, people saying, we're going to remember the businesses that really helped and did the right thing. So if you can, be the business that's doing the right thing, helping local shops, helping local community, doing deliveries. A football club that um, I'm, I'm very passionate about, I've offered up their, their, their grounds, their clubhouse to the NHS, they're very close to hospital. And, and that, you know, that involvement in community helps massively. Um, stay relevant. Um, so stay relevant in the situation and also recognise the fun. People like fun in this time. It's the one thing that keeps us up. I'll caveat that with just be careful of your humour a little bit. So don't overdo the humour because we can get that homelessly wrong. 
but let's make sure we're, we're keeping it fun and keeping it light. Um, also, something else worth doing, um, just, just share what your business is doing for your employees. So what we're doing as a business for the employees we have. So how we're involving them, how we're keeping them engaged, how we're supporting them at home with wellness, um, good, uh, mental toughness, resilience, that sort of thing. So it's not just all about we're trying to do a product, but we're trying to keep the people real as well. A couple of things, uh, virtual events, uh, just like this. This is an event that, that six weeks ago didn't exist. So virtual events like this to push content out, to push what you're doing as a business. Um, quite simply, maybe banner your website. So get your website kind of set up massively different with a, our response to COVID, that sort of thing. So as soon as a client hits it, they can see the changes that are being made and how the business is adapted. So useful stuff there. Um, a colleague of mine, uh, Hemsworth Fraser, always used to buy a little gift for a, a client whenever they used to go and see them. But importantly, I, I think that's, that's one thing we can do. So we can do a gifting service just to let people know we're still in touch with them. That's not some kind of bribe I'm, I'm coming up with here. But just to let people know. So if there's anything that we can offer them, that will be good. Link that to a business benefit of, of something like a promotion that can be redeemed post-COVID. So a lot of times businesses are going to still want um, revenue coming in. So if we can if we can push things out, maybe uh, hold things, but say if you, if you take this now, then you can redeem it post-COVID when we're back back closer to whatever the new normal may be um just call them just speak to them um and there's different ways um now depending on your business uh depending on your business and and the people that you're communicating with think about how you're going to communicate with them there's so many different options now and i think these changes have allowed us where we can use things a little bit more like whatsapp like text like email um, I don't want to get into the whole generational thing, but that there's some people will go to those things quicker and first. So use the way that, that, that is going to get into those people's faces first, really. And one thing I read about that I thought was really nice, actually, um, and this is specific to certain businesses, really, but they were, um, they were doing a free printing service. So they were aware that a lot of people could, didn't have a printer at home or they were running out of stuff or whatever. Um, and so they were printing stuff and mailing it to them which is just quite, and so it's just little things like that that'll help connect and that'll make your business feel like it cares about the people. Um, we're phrase as well, more than ever now, content is king. So content really is king. So the more that you can push out about what your business is doing, how it's working, what new things it's doing, becomes good. Um, some viral challenges, uh, just to keep um, businesses involved. There was one, one way back, um, I would advertise the name, but, but, but people had to have a word. They put it on their YouTube channel or their Instagram page and they said, duh, 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 and you added a specific word and it would push something back out. It's kind of key things. Keep people involved and then that that will get pushed around virally. And the other thing is share people's homes. I, I read somewhere that Chanel are now they're doing model shoots like in homes and they're you almost using the home is becoming a part of the set. So homes are now where we're working. So, you know, you all, everybody out there knows what my kitchen looks like, which, again, six weeks ago, nobody would have a clue. Um, so that's one of the changes. Um, if, if there's eagle-eyed people out there, actually, uh, you, you might notice there's a different clock behind me than there was from episode one. I'm fairly confident that's, that's happened. That's a, like a little spot of difference for you. Um, big thing as well, um, linking emotionally with clients. It's not just about products and more and more. There's research done that people are going to buy from people who they have an emotional con connection with. So look, work emotionally with them. There's certainly a, a few adverts on the TV. Um, things like EE, um, I think we all know Kevin Bacon, where he now doesn't just talk about um, phones. He's, he's, he's waving the banner for the NHS, which is great, but but that's what people, you know, it's not about what, what we can do now. It's not about here's my new product. It's about let's remember these people. So that's how we're going to get remembered as a, as a good business in these times of change. But also we're going to emotionally connect with those people. There used to be some old insurance adverts where people would, would just replace the product that was gone. They would, they would with money or something, they would, would replace the exact product. They'd rebuild the ring that was stolen or something like that. And that's an emotional connection. And that's one of the big things that business have got to look to do. Um, 
link virtually. Yes, we have to link virtually. We have no choice. But what we want to do is do it like a human. So we want to, the, the thing that we've missed is the human bit. So things like storytelling becomes really vital to people. When I'm face to face with people, that's what, that's the bit that people enjoy. So I have to share that human element rather than just the factual notion of business. So don't be afraid to share the human aspect of what you're doing. Um, now, I've got one more up there. How they can, yes, how, they, how you're going to change post-COVID. So what is business going to look like when you're kind of slightly different? What's our plan once we're out of first stage of lockdown? How's business going to change? What offerings are you going to have? So it's that constant flow of communication. Um, we can't afford to market our business the same. So don't market the same, but equally don't over market. <laughs> I saw on social media, a, a guy had uh, put something out, which made me chuckle. He tweeted, he said, oh, great. Um, it's really nice to know how every company that's got my email address is telling me how they're going to work through COVID. And that's kind of not what we should be doing. It should be about the right clients at the right time that we communicate with rather than blanket information going out to everybody. So, yes, we have to change the way we market and we go out to people. But what we can't do is afford to just dump it on everybody because people say, well, I, I, what's all that about, you know? Um, Sainsbury's obviously a bit of a, a, an example of someone who put it out to everybody, but that's fair enough because there are really shops there. Right. So we've got some tips there. We've got to change the way we work. We've got to have a more personal touch. And, and we've got to share how our business is working. So there's some nice things there. Now, my tea, my expensive tea, now it's quite good. Um, holy cow, one billion pound per kilo for the most expensive tea. Very good. It's 970,000 pounds per kilo. And it's called Da Hong Pao, um, P-A-O, 970,000. Um, it's from the Ming Dynasty. So it's pretty impressive, 970,000, one million per kilo there. The most expensive tea bag, not 200,000 pounds, uh, Mr. Croft, uh, but very close. But Carly Cole, again, you've kind of come up pretty... Uh, you kind of come up pretty impressively here. The price of it is just over £12,000 per bag, which is, is not bad. But the reason um, I'm giving Carly a bit of a shout out here is she's got with added gold dust. And in fact, it's a PG tips diamond and it includes 280 pieces, small pieces of diamond. So there we go. Silver tips imperial is the, is the name of that bag. And it's just over £12,000 per bag. It was done for the anniversary. There's some nice tea facts there. We've got some good tips to go to and try and connect with our business. When I'm back fresh after my three-day break on Tuesday, what we're going to talk about is trying to get the work-life balance right because now we're the home, the work-life balance, because now we're always at home. So how can we get that seesaw a little bit level? So have a great afternoon. Enjoy your tea. I'm going to not enjoy my Jaffa cake. And I will see you next Tuesday. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your guesses. Great to see you.